Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and as you might have seen on the Easy Composites website, they are now selling chopped strands. So chopped strands mostly used for forged uh, carbon fiber as well as the non-woven feel they have now. I will also address the elephant in like the room but more like the community about uh, carbon fiber. Uh, to explain you a bit more about my thoughts about forged carbon. So here we have it, we are going to do an infusion because I'm starting a small series about my adventures into the forged carbon fiber. So these will be test plates as with all new materials I test. I always like to do like some samples just to know how much resin will be used. So we'll do this uh, with a little infusion in this video and progress all the way through the videos to have like real forged carbon fiber. So it's compression molding um, or even RTM maybe later on. So here's the veal. So it's a non-woven. They have it in 100 grams and 300 grams. And as you might see, like it's short fibers. So you can tear it apart a bit like um, having like what you use to like a felt to when you like to paint your walls, you put it against the wall to protect your floor. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm measuring everything because the main purpose of this infusion is to know what the resin uptake is into the veal and the chopped fiber. So later we can decide how much resin we have to use for comp compression molding to do like the real forged carbon. So what I'm doing here is a little setup. So as you can see, if you have missed that video about the CompoFlex, so it's a three in one that I'll be using here as well. Uh, because it's very fast to do like a flat layup. Um, I, I've mentioned all the positive and negative sides from the CompoFlex. You can see it in the video that should pop up somewhere in the cards on the right top. So I'm preparing everything. As you might have seen, I've put some uh, painter's tape on the flange where I'll be putting the tacky tape just to avoid having any loose fibers of the chopped going into like under the tacky tape, so I'm sure I don't have leaks later on. So we have two pleats, just to have a bit of relief around the infusion spirals. And here you can see me adding, so the uh, resin out. So this is a vacuum site, vacuum site, I'm always pronouncing it wrong, sorry. Um, and so I'm just putting a little mark with a Stanley knife and pull put the hose through it. So now it's time to pull the vacuum. So most important thing is never do an infusion without having a full vacuum. So most possible problems are mostly around the edges or on your connectors. So that's mostly where you can find leaks. If you don't find a leak within 10 minutes on such a small part, just rebag it. Maybe you have a puncture bag and you'll never find a little puncture into your bag. So uh, just start over till you have a, a perfect vacuum onto your part. So here's, I've mentioned it many times why I like to use glass. And if it's like one of your first projects you want to tackle with infusion, start on a glass plate because you can easily see where the tacky tape uh, is not having a full contact. So here's about the elephant in the room. So uh, many people say car uh, forged carbon is just like the waste of, um, like real good carbon fiber. And I'll address a bit more about that uh, during this little infusion that you'll see later on. So one of the first things is, uh, I've seen it a lot on my Facebook page or on the comments, uh, polyester resin is crap, uh, only epoxy resin is good. So it's all about like having the, the good purposes for the material. So if you're using the right material, so this is an infusion polyester resin, uh, it's perfectly perfectly fine to use this type of resin for infusion. It's just like, it's like comparing a Nissan Leaf with a Ferrari. So both of the cars will get you from A to B, but mostly in a different way. So one is cheaper than the other and one, one will get you there faster. Uh, the other thing is that uh, one of the cars will get mo more noticed. Uh, I'll let it up to you to decide which car you think would be uh, more noticeable. Um, but they both have their purpose. So it's, uh, it's obvious that Boeing or NASA or like Formula One teams won't use chopped strands because they would use um, mostly like long 
woven fibers, mostly like a twill, or even I think in that type of industry that would use uni uh, directional fibers. It's just like a matter of knowing what to use on what parts. So I'm, I don't think polyester resin is bad. For example, when they're using swimming pools, um, it's like budgets is a big part of it as well. So um, one of the advantages is that with a good setup, with compression molds and R RTM, you can make many parts in one day compared to resin infusion or pre prepreg. So if you have a nice setup of your molds with heated molds, you could go up like I think at up to 100 parts a day uh, compared with less parts using uh, resin infusion or prepreg. So here you can see me cl uh, closing the infusion. So keep in mind, and I know about that polyester resin has a low boiling point, so under vacuum, uh, the polyester res resin will start to boil. So what I did is opened the resin in a bit longer after closing the uh, vacuum site. So what we can now know is how much resin went into the parts. So in the future videos, I think maybe tomorrow a new video will be online. Uh, I'll go through this test setup and know how much resin was used. So if you have some more thoughts or questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll answer them in following videos. So this will be a bit more of an interactive uh, series uh, that I'll take you on uh, during the next few weeks. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.